So uh, myself, along with a group of investors, recently bought the International Racquetball Tour, and we are trying to create or, or find ways to create uh, national media exposure and thought, who better to get advice from than you guys? That is a very good point. Yeah. First of all, is racquetball still a sport? Yes. <laughs> I mean, it was Linda. big. I play. <laughs> you know, there are so many different uh, uh, definitions of racquetball of what it used to be. Uh, same with handball. Hey, you Linda. Know, there are different, hey, Linda. Yes. Do you know what you just did? <laughs> what? You just basically turned into Dan Patrick. <laughs> You literally just did to this lovely man from St. Louis know, exactly sorry. what Dan Patrick did to you. Yeah, I know. I'm right. sorry. Continue, continue, John. Racquetball is going to be the biggest sport in America in 2037 yeah. if you make a deal with Snapchat as an OTT play and you develop stars the way Sonny Warblin created Joe Namath. The key for sports is distribution and star making. So the advice I give you is you need to look at Facebook, Netflix, Amazon, and those players as your OTT, not ESPN, not ABC, and, and that conglomerate, Disney, or, or CBS, or NBC, because they're going to be looking at it differently, and they're going to make you pay to even be on there, because that's what they do with small things, and I think then you've got to find the most handsome or beautiful racquetball player with charisma in the world, and make them a social media star, and now you've got a prayer to have something. Speaking, of, but here's the thing, we love goofy things, and we put it on top 10, we put on the cornhole yes. championship. Yes. Okay, and I'm like, as I'm reading this in the top 10, I'm like, what the hell did I just read? What does well, it all mean? You but this could, that's correct. the kind of thing, exactly what you said, getting a pretty person or something sure. goofy and crazy to get exposure. Scott, it's star making and distribution in a modern way, the same way that ESPN had to start off with bullfighting and, and, and it's darts. It's John and, or Scott. Is it John? <laughs> I keep calling him Scott, right? There's a John yeah, Scott who yeah. used to play in the John, NHL. John, can you change <laughs> your name the, to not Scott? Not the same one. Got okay. It. John, I think, I think you guys probably know that's the move, right? Yeah, I think so. You know, we've got, we've got to take this opportunity that we have. You know, we've got some very marketable stars out there. Right. And believe it or not, we have over 100 events a year. I believe uh, it. With prize purses of $60,000 and more. And so I believe these it. Events, but trying to get out of that box has proven difficult from the past owners. And now that we have a group of investors that are willing to spend the money and, and figure this out, we're very motivated my man, to my take man, this to where it used to be. My man, you are the poker tournaments pre-ESPN coverage. The problem is ESPN's not the place you should do that now with. You need to figure out basically the same model for the new environment of consumption. I like that. I appreciate that. So you need to really think about what OTT means. Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and Facebook and Snapchat and Twitter are the preview. There are going to be so many places. Content has never been in a better place. You need to cold Mm. email Bleacher Report and Barstool and ESPN. So and good. Like you have to find distribution because I, if you gave me the New York Jets right now, if you said, hey, I'm John Scott, like genie from the future. And if you can name one racquetball player, one, I will give you the New York Jets, I would lose. I cannot name one racquetball player. Nor can I. And wow. Linda Cohn is a Hall of Famer. Legit. <laughs> Legit. So that's it, man. Distribution. Good luck, my man. Thank you very much for the You're